This apparatus is used to thoroughly investigate the Hall effect. Specifically, this unit has a gallium arsenide N-type chip. The process consists of two major steps. Calculating the Hall voltage as a function of the drive current and the magnetic field, and the conductivity of the chip. Both of these lead you to be able to calculate the mobility of the charge carriers and also investigate the distribution of the magnetic field. The main part is the Hall apparatus unit itself. It consists of a pair of Helmholtz coils and an X and Y system for positioning the chip. There are two reversing switches for the driving current and the magnetic current. The indicator Hall voltage and switch to measure the conductivity. The power supply includes 10 turn potentiometers so you can make very fine adjustments. It has a milliamp power supply for energizing the drive current, an amp ear power supply for energizing the Helmholtz coils, and a millivolt voltmeter for measuring the Hall voltage and conductivity. The manual shows you how to connect all the wires. We have the drive current being connected to the left. We have the magnetic field coils being connected to the right. And the millivolt voltmeter being connected to the unit in the center. On the other side of the device, each of these wires have written on them the location where they get connected to the board. Before you run the experiment, turn the apparatus on and allow it to be on for three to five minutes to equilibrate. Once it is on after three to five minutes, make sure these are all zeroed out. And you also want to make sure that the crystal is centered in the Helmholtz coil. The system allows you to investigate and eliminate systematic errors. These include the inequipotential effect, the Eddingshausen effect, the Nernst effect, the Rege du Leak effect. Of these, only the inequipotential effect can be fully eliminated. The four different measurements are possible by switching the polarity of the drive current and the polarity of the magnetic field. From those four values, you average the results and you get your Hall effect voltage. So now we're going to set the drive current to three milliamps and the magnetic field coils to half an amp. The advantage of the 10 turn potentiometers is you can zero in to exactly 3 milliamps or exactly half an amp. So now I'm going to change the polarity so that you can average out the Hall voltage. Now that we have the Hall voltage, I reset the entire unit back to zero, and now we have to find the conductivity. In order to do this, you have to flip both switches to the position that is called sigma. Now that everything is zeroed out, we are ready to find the conductivity of the chip. And to do this, you simply adjust the current driving the chip and read off the appropriate voltage. Now that you have the Hall voltage and the conductivity, you can now calculate the charge carrier mobility. Now that you have a technique for determining the Hall effect, you can explore the distribution of the magnetic field. This slide allows you to move it left and right, as well as up and down. Here is some sample data of the Hall voltage versus the magnetic current. They both give you a very linear and precise line. Here is what the sample graph of the magnetic field versus Hall voltage looks like when you are measuring the magnetic field from the center of the coil. The Hall effect is a complete self-sustained apparatus for thoroughly investigating not only the Hall effect and the charge carriers, but also the applications to the magnetic field. You don't have to use any other equipment, and when you're done, 
It has a sturdy steel case for you to safely store this without worrying about any of the equipment getting damaged.